Did you honestly think that after watching this movie and reviewing it, I was going to miss out on yet another opportunity to wear my suit and keep my glasses on? God damn, I want it to look sharp after this movie. Hello everyone, TV here with another movie review, and this time it's for a movie that was actually on my anticipated list for 2015, right up there with Avengers Age of Ultron and uh, Star Wars and even Jurassic World to an extent. Of course, there were a couple of moments where I needed to remind myself when the release date was because I knew it was coming sometime within this season of this year, but I didn't exactly know a date, and it wasn't until maybe last month, a month before that, that I realized, oh, February 13th. And so I wanted to check it out and I had high expectations because not only is this being directed by Matthew Vaughn who did X-Men First Class and Kick-Ass, but also because some of the cast uh, uh, th that were involved, I was hoping to see them do some uh, things that were kind of out, uh, against type like Colin Firth is in an action movie. Colin Firth is in an action movie. But the story, which I remind you, is based on a graphic novel, and it looks like Matthew Vaughn does nothing but graphic novels these days, centers around a character named Eggsy, who's this young man with an awful lot of potential, and I'll, I'll admit this is uh, uh, some familiar territory, but he is this young man full, filled with potential of accomplishing great things, and that's mainly because of, of, his, uh, of his father's legacy as a Kingsman. And then he is approached by Galahad, played by Colin Firth, who tells him about this legacy and offers him the opportunity to become a Kingsman himself and thwart this evil plan concocted by Valentine, played by Samuel L. Jackson. Now this adaption has material that's a little bit different than the previous adaptions that Matthew Vaughn has involved himself with that he's now become known by. He adapted Kick-Ass and X-Men First Class, but those two stories dealt with superheroes. Of course one of them wasn't exactly so super because he was just a regular human being, Kick-Ass. And then the others dealt with mutants with, with um, special powers. Here, he's tackling the spy genre. But much like with Kick-Ass, more so with Kick-Ass than X-Men, he c creates this tone, this atmosphere, that is very reminiscent of someone like Edgar Wright, where it's very kinetic, the camera's often moving, but not in the style of Michael Bay, or, uh, Michael Bay, Michael Bay, or, you know, using an awful lot of shaky cam, but just using it in a, in, in a way to give this film its own style, or give any film that he does these days its own style. It's that way, from here on out, whenever you see a movie being directed this way, you'll be like, oh, that's Matthew Vaughn. But what I consider to be most important, apart from the camera work, is what he does with this story, or this world, this world that he creates where, sure, it's a little bit of a stretch in terms of what can happen in this world versus what can happen in the real world as far as uh, plans and, and world domination and that kind of thing. Stuff very derivative from the spy genre. But what Matthew Vaughn does is that he takes it and not only does he make it self-aware because there's a couple of gags throughout the movie where the movie's almost poking fun at itself by realizing that this is one of those spy movies. But also be it has fun with it while at the same time knowing when to take it seriously and when not. A perfect analogy that I thought up what to describe what I'm talking about is that this movie is rated R for a very good reason. There's an awful lot of blood, gore, and profanity. But at the same time, it has a, a similar tone with that of the Marvel movies. That's very lighthearted, it has that very heroic trumpet-based music, and combining those two elements and yet making them work is ultimately what Matthew Vaughn strives to do with with his latest films. Um, I, I almost feel bad that I haven't caught up with uh, what I think was his first film, Layer Cake, with uh, Daniel Craig. That's so far the only Matthew Vaughn movie that I have not seen, but ever since Kick Cast, I've been following his work, and so far he is one of my favorite directors to look forward to when he's got a new movie coming out. But another perfect example of this, of the balancing and tone, would have to be with the cast, who delivers some really great performances but they know that this is not going to be a best picture contender at the Oscars. It's a, it's, it's a movie that is kind of ridiculous in a sense but it knows it and it has fun with it while at the same time obeying the rules of the world that it's, it's created. And I love how every single one of these actors that come from some really prolific backgrounds like Mark Strong, Samuel L. Jackson who's an Oscar nominee, and Colin Firth and Michael Caine who are Academy Award winners know that they need to pull their A-game because the director said so, but they know that after reading the script they, they know that they mustn't take things too seriously because after all it's still based on a comic book. And nothing needs to be too gritty or too dark like the Batman movies. It's kind of funny because Michael Caine is in here. And because of that, almost every cast member brings some sense of either 
memor memorability it, in which they make the character somewhat memorable to where I was like, ooh, that thing that, thing that, that character was doing is going to stick with me, or likability. Almost every character in this cast was quite likable, and that's especially important for your main character, Eggsy, who's uh, this rebellious type who doesn't like to follow the rules, and it's very easy to really drop the ball with a character like that and make him just a douchebag. But they make him likable, and that's the only way they, they, that that screenwriters and filmmakers can make you care about the character and care about the stakes. Because there were some moments here where, even though I had a sense that things were going to be okay, I was still quite nervous because I'm like, oh, the stakes are high, the plan... Uh, that the villain came out with kind of makes sense and it's something that makes you go, you know, you're evil, but I can't help but sense that there's something right about your plan and it sucks and makes me feel like a terrible human being. And speaking of villains, Samuel L. Jackson kills it in this movie. I wasn't expecting him to really like him from the trailers because it looked like he was just being Samuel L. Jackson, you know, hey, what's up, man, that kind of thing. But what they did was blend Samuel L. Jackson Samuel Jackson, all right, he he doesn't need any kind of description. His name says it all, Samuel Jackson, and then combined it with what I'm assuming were characteristics from this character in the graphic novel. I have not read it. I haven't looked up my fair share of research, but I'm assuming that there's certain character traits, especially one that I was not expecting, even from the trailer. As soon as he spoke, I'm like, but, uh okay, I'm really hoping this doesn't become annoying, and they blended them together, and it worked, especially that particular characteristic. It made for some really funny dialogue. Mark Strong is in this movie, and man, I'm really proud of Mark Strong, because whenever you see this guy, you think, oh, there's the villain, there's the bad guy, or there's the guy that's going to betray me, like, you know, Finestro in Green Lantern. But I'm really glad that this guy is actually taking some roles recently where he's going against type. He's actually playing the good guy in this movie, as well as he did in The Imitation Game. And he played similar roles in both of these movies where not only is he British, he's not disguising himself as an American or anything, but he's British and he's in an uh, authoritative position and he's very strict and tough as nails. But they're also kind of different because of the tones of the movie, whereas Imitation Game was much more serious and therefore he took it much more serious. Here he knows, again, that it's a comic book movie and so he makes the role much more likable by taking it easy, relaxing, having fun with the role at the same time being an actor and actually performing. But by far my favorite character, I mean I liked everybody else, but my favorite character was Harry aka Galahad played by Colin Firth. He was the reason why I felt like dressing up for this review and he, I mean he brought Classy back. I wouldn't be surprised if an awful lot of girls pay no attention to the main guy here and actually focus on Colin Firth because of how dapper he was. I was like kudos to you sir. And again, much like Mark Strong going against type, he's known for doing some of these much more smaller, much more I don't want to say artsy, but much sophisticated movies, and then make a turnaround and go for an action film like this, I'm like, hey, bravo, sir, while at the same time, not phoning it in and putting in a good performance and making a really cool, badass character. And just when I thought that he couldn't to top himself off, he is responsible for, in my opinion, the best action sequence in the entire movie. I will never be able to listen to Free Bird by Leonard Skinner the same way ever again. And I guess with that I can segue into the action sequences which once again Matthew Vaughn films in a way where he uses different cameras, smaller cameras that feel, uh, that make the footage look a little GoPro-ish but at the same time he doesn't shake it too much to where you can't see what's going on. And sometimes he cuts together shots that you know that he couldn't have moved the camera so he kinda like sews some of these shots together but still it works and mo most importantly he shows you what is going on so if somebody's getting shot in the leg or stabbed in the hand he is going to show you and that's what I love about the, the style of uh, the, his style of filmmaking when it comes to action you see some of that in Kick-Ass a little bit of it in X-Men and you see uh, you see it uh, take place once again here in Kingsman delivering some really uh, entertaining set pieces that uh, just blew me away so far this year. I mean, Avengers, uh, what other movie we got? Uh, Star Wars, and plenty of other action movies that are coming out this year. You got some competition with Kingsman. On my way home, I was trying to pick the movie apart and think of anything that I didn't like about it, and to be honest, I couldn't. If there was anything to really nitpick, and trust me, this is incredibly nitpick. In fact, I'm trying my best to not nitpick movies anymore because I feel like I'm just looking for the negative in movies that since, uh, that I feel that maybe I just don't need to, alright? If something is truly bad in a movie that stands out to me and automatically comes to me, then sure. But when it comes to movies like this where I'm looking for things to say weren't all that great about a movie, I probably shouldn't 
But if I had to, I would say that maybe there's a couple of details that I think were, were kind of eh, yeah, a little too far-fetched. Like, for example, there's a shot in the trailer that you can see where Colin Firth is fighting those guys in the pub and he shoots this thing that hits this guy in the head and he does like a double flip and then finally falls to the ground. You know, like, how the hell does that happen? So it's it, moments like that happen throughout the movie that I'm like, ah, okay, you know, you know, this, this world, you know, it's based on a comic book. But there's just so much great stuff in this movie that I'm able to look past it. Now, with that said, I'm going to give my rating for the movie. And it's going to be uh, something that I, I need to address because an awful lot of people are going to look at me and be like, wait, you gave it that rating? I'm actually going to give Kingsman, The Secret Service, a low 9 out of 10. Oh, David, why are you giving it a low 9 out of 10 if you're saying that there's almost nothing bad about the movie and therefore should be considered perfect? A 10 out of 10. Well, that's actually a problem that an awful lot of, of reviewers, whether it be from movie websites or video game websites or even YouTube reviewers, face. It's a question that they're, they're often asked, and that is that if something was without any flaws, why didn't you give it a perfect 10? Well, that's because the material that we really, really enjoyed in the movie, we didn't love it to that extent. You know what I mean? Just because we didn't find anything good and uh, anything bad in it, I'm sorry, doesn't mean that we ought at the door with the utmost passion, the stuff that we really didn't like in the movie. So I hope that's a good way to describe not only how I feel about Kingsman, but how other reviewers rate their movies and say, hey, just because I didn't li li uh, dislike anything in the movie doesn't mean that it should be considered a masterpiece along with some of the classics like Citizen Kane. But I dare say that Kingsman, The Secret Service, is one of my favorite movies of the year so far, and I highly recommend it. If you're a huge fan of Kick-Ass mixed with James Bond, and, and love that kind of that, that kind of tone, then this is the movie for you. So thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you guys thought of Kingsman of the Secret Service if you have watched it, and I'll see you guys next time.